Hello Almighty. Today I am going to recap the third and the climax part of the movie. Avatar. The Way of Water. If you haven't watched the previous parts yet, please do watch it and link above. Okay, let's get into it. At the Three Brothers, Payakan is being chased by the Sea Dragon and scores by his jetboat fleet, as he has already been tagged again. Loic warns his father of the situation via radio, and the kids manage to free Payakan from the tracking device, but Korich spots them and scores by his jetboats enter the water in pursuit. As Neteam attempts to use the tracking device to lure the fleet away, the other kids begin hiding below the surface. Multiple Mako subs and crabsuit operators deploy into the sea, using their weaponry to disable the kids' ILU mounts. Loic, Syria and Tuck are eventually captured by a Mako sub using a net, which is lifted out of the sea by Korich's Ikran and brought aboard the RDA carrier. The other kids continue to be pursued. Jake, Neytiri and the Metkayana clan arrive at the three brothers on their T-Surex to confront the RDA fleet, seeing the kids cuffed to the deck railing. Before the battle, Korich contacts Jake by radio and gives him an ultimatum to surrender or risk having his children killed. Ronal admonishes Jake for being the reason that the battle has reached the Metkayana. Realizing that the battle was always between himself and Korich, Jake decides to surrender to avoid further bloodshed on Pandora. However, seeing his friend Loic imperiled, Hayakin rushes towards the Sea Dragon. He leaps out of the water, slamming down on its foredeck and killing Rikam Ya and some of the RDA crew. From his nearby Matador gunboat, the enraged scores by fires an explosive harpoon at Payakin, who uses his hardened skull to deflect the shot which instead damages the Sea Dragon. Jake and the Metkayana clan choose this moment to attack the RDA fleet, using spears and arrows to pick apart the crews of the five Picador jet boats from the backs of T-Surex. Jake manages to destroy two of the boats, exploding one and causing the other to violently run aground. Neytiri swoops down on the back of her Ikran, killing Rikam Lopez as well as shooting down sea wasps, one of which crash lands onto the Sea Dragon's top deck. Below the surface, a Mako sub continues to pursue Kiri, Aonung and Rocho. Kiri calls on her bond with Awa to control undersea flora and fauna, using it to disable the sub and smother the evacuating operators. Above, Hayakin swipes a passing jetboat with his tail, critically damaging the larger vessel. In the Chaos Spider, who is still hostile to his RDA captors, sabotages the carrier's helm controls and causes it to accelerate uncontrolled towards nearby reef. It barrels over them, landing hard, immobilized and immediately beginning to sink. As Jake's Surik manages to knock Korich off his banshee into the sea, Scoresby tries to snare Payakin with a harpoon cable, but the highly intelligent Tulkin manages to manipulate the cable and wrap around the matador, dragging its belly over nearby rocks and pinning Scoresby to his gunner's platform by his arm. As the immense pressure Payakin puts on the gunboat eventually causes the cable to tear the gunner's platform off the boat, severing Scorby's arm. Neteam reappears, leaping onto the sea dragon from his ILU to free Loic, Tuck and Sireya. The girls jump into the sea and begin to swim away. However, Loic takes a rifle from Brown's body, refusing to leave without saving Spider. Kiri, Aonung and Rocho surface nearby, only for Rikam Wainfully to swoop in on his Banshee and snatch Kiri out of the sea, carrying her back onto the deck of the Sea Dragon. Seeing this, Tuck and Sireya turn back and also climb back on board the foundering vessel. They find Kiri cuffed to the railing of the moon pool, but before they can free her, Korich and Wainfully reappear. Korich knocks Sireya into the moon pool, where she swims away to safety, and Wainfully cuffs Tuck to the railing next to Kiri. Soon after, Loic and Neteam find Spider and incapacitate his guards. Loic is forced to shoot and kill an RDA soldier during the rescue, which leaves him shaken. Neteam takes the gun from Loic and hurries him and Spider to dive into the sea but is mortally shot by Wainfleet as he covers their escape. On nearby rocks, Jake and Neytiri try to save Neteam's life, but as Pandora enters its daily eclipse and the sky darkens, Neteam succumbs to his wound in their arms. Neytiri is especially horrified. Brief stricken, Jake decides to face Korich once and for all, when the latter radios to reveal that he has recaptured Tuck and Kiri. Jake and Neytiri stealthily climb to the top deck of the Sea Dragon, with Spider leading them due to his knowledge of the vessel. Jake uses a grenade to detonate the crashed Sea Wasp, killing many of the remaining RDA troops and evacuees. In the chaos, Jake and Neytiri attack the survivors on the top deck, 
killing Recom's Prager and Zadinarsk before working their way down to the moon pool where Tuck and Kiri are held. Wainfleet commands Recom, Mansk and the remaining soldiers on the lower deck, but Jake beats both recombinants unconscious and knocks Wainfleet into the sea. Spider watches from cover as Nateri slaughters the last human troops in a berserker rage. Breaking her bow before killing the last unarmed, cowering soldier. Jake cuts off Kiri and Tuck's cuffs before engaging Korich in a fist fight that ends with the recom snatching Kiri at knife point. However, Neytiri intercedes, similarly holding Spider at knife point. At first, Korich claims his son is inconsequential, but he ultimately releases Kiri when Neytiri cuts Spider's chest. Korich and Jake resume fighting, and Jake gets the upper hand. Due to the many explosions and fires, the sea dragon quickly begins to sink with Spider, Korich and the Sully family trapped inside. Jake strangles Korich into unconsciousness and is almost drowned himself. However, he is rescued by Loic and Pyokin. Kiri uses her bond with Ewa to summon a gill mantle and bioluminescent squids that help her save Neytiri and Tuck, and which then guide the entire family to the surface. Spider, who has been searching the sinking vessel for Jake, finds his dying father Korich. He is initially hesitant to save him, however, begrudgingly rescues him, bringing him up to the surface and leaving him on nearby rocks where he regains consciousness. Korich begs Spider to come with him. However, Spider rejects this and leaves Korich, much to his dismay. In the aftermath at the end of the movie, Jake and his family sorrowfully conduct Neteum's funeral according to Metkayana customs and lay his body to rest in the cove of the ancestors where it is absorbed by the spirit tree. Jake then proceeds to inform Tanawari and Ronal of his decision to leave the reef and move far away. Tanawari, however, respectfully identifies him as part of the Metkayana clan and welcomes his family to stay. Humbled, Jake vows that he and his family will defend Awalu, their new home. And the movie ends. Hope you liked my recaps of the Avatar, Athway of Water, please do subscribe and support my channel for more such recaps. Thanks for watching.